Bain's and Mrs. Bain's Jesse Bain holds a doctor's degree from Columbia University, a master's degree from Texas University, and a bachelor's degree from Southwest Texas University. Well, just recently, she had to learn to read and write all over again. This time, she was learning Braille. Several years ago, she began losing her sight and today can see only a blur in strong light. At 81, she enrolled in a special course at Columbia University. The university hailed this as quite an accomplishment for a person of her age. She was the oldest person to learn to read Braille. She told me it was very difficult. For me, it was terrible. It was just, and I would a great many times just desire. I never cried in my life. I'm no crier. And I would put my head down on a table and sob that I couldn't do it. Husband say, you can. And I'd go off and we'd do something else. I'd come back and I'd try again. And I started. I'd never seen, I'd never touched Braille. I knew no one that had ever touched it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a time with the ABCs. She also has a writer board that enables her to write in longhand. Mrs. Bain, or Dr. Bain, if you please, was a teacher in the San Antonio Independent School District for 39 years. She was teaching at Lanier High School before retiring in 1968. She and her husband, Jacob, live at 1926 West Magnolia Avenue. A remarkable lady, Dr. Jesse Bain. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. So this is one way that I want to warm up before any meet. Jan Trottier okay. is the athletic trainer for the Harlandale Independent School District. As such, she works with injured high school and middle school athletes. Jan told me there's not an abundance of women in this field. There's a hesitancy to hire women because of misconceptions the trainers are constantly working in locker rooms filled with undressed male athletes. This makes it difficult for women to land jobs. It is hard at first because they feel that uh, working with high school boys and girls that rumors will spread, uh, you know, problems dealing with uh, nudity and uh, working in men's locker rooms, things like that. But uh, I haven't had any problems with that. Uh, you know, I have the guys come in here with shorts to get treated with shorts on. And Jan said some football players did not accept her at first, but that's pretty well changed now. She said the job of an athletic trainer is more than just taping ankles and knees. Her qualifications include a master's degree. You have to know your medicine, you have to know the anatomy, and uh, there's the initial evaluations of sports injuries on the field in a football game. Usually, uh, if you're lucky, you'll have a team physician there. If you're not, then the trainer does all of it. An Army Reserve 2nd Lieutenant Jan works during the summer months with the U.S. Modern Pentathlon team at Fort Sam Houston. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. Actress singer Leland Palmer stars as the ex-wife of Joe Gideon, played by Roy Scheider, in the movie All That Jazz. The 20th Century Fox Columbia Pictures movie was directed by Bob Fosse. The story concerns a man who is hard driven. He's a choreographer and director and suffers a severe heart attack. Leland Palmer told me she realized she too was driving herself too much. I had done that actually. I, I could really identify with this character because uh, from the time I started dancing at 19 and a half, I never, I didn't stop. I mean, I took 17 classes a week for three years. I moved to New York. I auditioned for show after show. My first show was with Bob Fosse and Little Me, the National Touring Company. And then I started studying acting and singing and uh, dancing, maybe three, four classes a day. And, uh, and I just sort of finally just threw up my hands and was feeling quite 
uh, crazy, really, and, and, and sort of ill, and I, and I just didn't feel right about my life. And I took a real long vacation. She said she learned a lot during that vacation. Upon returning to work, she did the part in All That Jazz. Hey. Paul Schaefer, New Center 4. These young performers are the Saul Teens. They're in rehearsal for their latest production, Free to Be Me. The Saul Teens is a younger version of Salt, the San Antonio Little Theater. Saltine director is Phil George, a freshman drama major at Incarnate Word College and a 79 graduate of John Marshall High School, where he developed his interest in the theater. Ask Phil how saltines get to be saltines. Well, we have auditions every once in a while, and I, I encourage all of them to come out. I don't turn anybody away. Anybody who shows up for the auditions, I either cast them or I put them in some kind of a technical crew or something like that. And <laughs> Their current production open to a full house Saturday in the Cellar Theater at San Antonio Little Theater in San Pedro Park. And it will play each Saturday afternoon through the 12th of April. Longer if necessary. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. wrong. At 5,000 feet, I left the plane to make a 3,000 foot delay uh, jump. My shoot just uh, the canopy, the, the um, shroud lines just trailed me down like a uh, wet handkerchief. This is Joe Jump Pappy Long, a San Antonio native. He is a former professional parachute jumper and wing walker. Here he's describing one of his less successful jumps. Oh, he survived that jump, of course but with painful bumps and bruises, but no broken bones. When Joe was 23 years old, the year was 1927, he gave up his job as a bank clerk to barnstorm the countryside with the Stinson Field Flying Circus. In 14 years, he made 523 jumps, performing at new airport dedications and farmer's cow pastures. He worked mostly on weekends, had a full-time job as an iron worker. His most serious injury came not from a parachute jump, but when he now fell 18 do, feet no off a construction a job in Texarkana and was hospitalized. In World War II, he joined the Army Air Corps and was a parachute rigger. Long told me the purpose of the daredevil air shows of the 30s was to promote aviation. The city of San Antonio, Bear County, and the 66th Texas Legislature have all recognized Joe Pappy Long for his contributions to aviation and for his civic activities. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4.
What you see here is not an attractive Easter bonnet. No, it's the latest creation to fight the energy crisis. It's a people mover machine and is normally worn on the head and will give the wearer an assist in walking down the street. Not to mention promote a few strange looks. Or it can take the effort out of bicycling. It can cool the wearer while propelling a backyard swing. The people mover machine is a maximum efficient air-cooled engine. One cylinder, it utilizes several different sources for power, including solar power, wind power, and very little gasoline. It was developed in an abandoned garage on the city's south side. Over several years of research went into it by the San Antonio inventor, who wishes to remain anonymous. He did tell New Center 4 another use it can be put to is as an auxiliary engine on a motor vehicle to assist getting to the nearest garage or expressway exit if the car's engine conks out. <laughs> it's just about impossible to say when this will be manufactured for public use. We could probably safely say, though, never, since, after all, today is April Fool's Day. Paul Schaefer, New Center 4. When Corliss Hudson was three years old, she was already being exposed to photography. She spent most of her days at her dad's photography studio. Corliss is the only photographer on the staff of the Northwest Times and the North San Antonio Times. She is one of only some three women newspaper photographers in the city. At age nine, she started her career with a brownie hawkeye. In high school, she worked on the school newspaper in Waco and a college paper at Abilene Christian University where she majored in mass communications. Being a woman doesn't take the hazard out of the work photographers are sometimes faced with. Like the time she was photographing a football game and got tackled or hit in the face with a basketball at a game one night. Here's an example of some of the many pictures she has taken over the years. Corliss Hudson, woman newspaper photographer. Paul Schaefer, News Center 4. <laughs> 